Okay, uh, let's begin, guys. Uh, thanks for waiting. Uh, we have quite a few people now. Uh, so, hi, everybody, and good evening, and welcome to the first edition of Copa Jam. And we just like to start by saying that we're absolutely glad that we've got an equally good response from the tech and creative communities both. And this was a fairly unfamiliar concept of court poetry, and we did get uh, a lot a great response from everybody. Uh, we're super excited to have you all join us live on various streams that are on right now. Um, Copo Jam is our first attempt to bring tech and art together to see the kind of creative possibilities that lie at this intersection and in the process develop a new category of uh, creators. Okay, so, uh, so this is our attempt to uh, develop a new category of creators as well. And through Copo Jam and the overall umbrella of draft, we want to instigate programmers and techies to explore creative use of coding and to make art for creative expression through this format and also inspire designers, artists, and other creators to use technology to augment their art, what they're doing right now, uh, to make for exciting experiences. Um, now to introduce the host of this event, uh, I am Nandipi. I form 50% of Ajayabhar, which is one of the organizers. Uh, the other 50% of Ajayabhar is Ambika, who you'll see at the end of the uh, jam. Uh, we have Doobie Doobie Doobie, who is also commonly known as Agat. Uh, he will be moderating the jam this evening for us. Um, a huge shout out to the very nice folks at Haski who have set up all the streams for us and who have been extremely patient with us uh, during with, while we did tech chest for like an hours all together. And they've been super supportive in general for everything. Um, we hope all of you have a seamless experience as far as the tech goes, but sometimes machines also can get moody. So if there is a tech glitch, then we're just gonna say that this is called draft and it is expected behavior. So let's just embrace the glitch. Um, so let's get started with this and over to Agat. Okay, thank you Nanditi and thanks everyone for coming. Um, uh, so this is the first Copo Jam, Code Poetry Jam and uh, Copo Jam is part of Draft is what Nanditi has already told us. And Draft is an attempt to, to understand how text is going to change in the future. So one of the things that Draft is trying to do is understand intersections of text and technology and, um, and understand how widely uh, text influences our life. So, uh, so in fact, uh, when we started working on, uh, on this, we realized that text is everywhere. It is in fact an all-inclusive category. Um, hold on, yeah, my, uh, yeah, can you, is this okay now? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I was saying that how we, when we started to think about draft and we realized that text is such an all-inclusive category that there's almost everything comes inside text and, um, and therefore it's so powerful. And we thought that it's in, it'll be interesting to understand how text will change in the future when uh, the lockdown started and COVID kind of took over our world. We were planning to, to set up a small festival in Jaipur and uh, well, because of the lockdown and because of how things have, because of how things have panned out, uh, we uh, we kind of changed course a little bit and thought it would be nice to meet multiple times, uh, uh, multiple times through smaller events till the time we all can get together in person and and do uh, do something big with draft. So that's how Copo Jam was born. Um, some of us are interested in were interested in poetry. Some of us were interested in code. Some of us were interested in how both these things intersect with each other. And uh, I think one of the evenings when we were thinking how to, um, what to do now, uh, sort of we were, uh, Nanditi kind of suggested that why don't we do a poetry jam, but, uh, but try and see what technology can do in the, in the mix. And Copo Jam was born. And after that, when we spoke to everybody in the community, everybody was extremely fascinated that uh, what is this and what could this be? So, uh, so what happened as we started to think about uh, Popo Jam was that we, we went out thinking of syntax poetry, which is a very specific category, but it very quickly expanded. Uh, we were very, very encouraged by the kind of responses we got and the discussions we had with everybody and everybody told us, yes, but why can't this be poetry and why can't that be poetry? So, so we ended up expanding the definition of, of poetry a lot and, and, uh, and that kind of helped us in uh, um, in opening our eyes and sort of widening our horizon of what code poetry can be. Uh, what we 
what we are exploring today are also some very very interesting and very varied kind of diverse forms of code poetry we have uh, blackout poetry we have uh, we also have sentiment analysis in the context of literature we also have something on uh, speculative literature speculative fiction and uh, generative texts and things like that um, we also have uh, we also have sound uh getting converted to words and those kind of uh, those kind of translations as well um this uh, the idea of of popo jam the idea of draft is to encourage experimentation and uh, is to encourage uh, newer forms to encourage people to come together and learn from each other uh, and it is with that spirit that we have kind of set up this uh, set up this platform um uh, so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to go uh, all we, we we have uh, uh, all our uh, all our presenters are uh, are lined up one after the other and our questions are we'll take questions at the end uh, but you can keep shooting those questions on wherever you are if you are on zoom facebook or youtube you can keep typing those questions in and if you want to address any specific panelists you can write their name in front of that um, as well and in the end uh, we'll take all the questions and uh, uh so i hope uh, i hope that is clear uh one of our presenters will also uh, would would also interact with you through the chat box so uh, those instructions will come when they have to uh what we have lined up today is uh, as i said we have uh, uh just a second yeah so we what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh with one of the youngest presenters here his name is uh, jazer and uh, jazer is an interaction designer and uh, he has this kind of a, he has this playful itch with with code and he makes in experimental interfaces and uh, uh, so today jazer is going to share something uh, with us in the space of blackout poetry uh, so now i think over to you jazer and i'm going to sort of yeah shut my video and so over to you yeah thanks agat Okay, hi everybody. And before I get into what interface I have today for you, what I'm going to be sharing, uh, the next few minutes we're going to be dabbling into this realm of blackout poetry. So let me just get onto that. Okay, so blackout poetry is a form of poetry where you take an already existing piece of text and you only select a few words, paint over the rest. and then the selected few words they form a poem and to me when i looked at this visual it almost i i could sense uh, an interplay of opposition here certain words are being on certain words are being off and computationally i can also look at it as certain words being true and certain words being false so this binary interplay this interplay of opposites is what the in, what the interface is going to explore and the interesting part here is that the opposition is going to be the person who's there to interact with it their intuition their emotional intuition versus a bot who's going to be functioning on some mechanical randomness so let's dive into that interface so this is it i hope you guys can see my cursor i made it very bold and very green and this is a piece of text and on the left you can see certain creation modes here and we're going to go through each of these creation modes and yeah look at what poetry we're getting so this is the first mode which says thesis only you select and this is where only i'm going to work through this and i'm going to be improvising my way through this so let's see and i'll start performing my poetry so i'm going to be selecting the words Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That is the poem that I want to go for. And from here I can move on to do the blackout. And this is it. And I'm not going to be reading out this poem myself. For to the essence of Copo Jam, I have brought in something interesting, a, a fun feature that we're going to explore. So let's hear that. Modern me was from the next routine I could exceed the younger unhappiness. and that was speed synthesis 
So it's interesting here how I have performed the poetry and now this bot. Modern me was from the next routine I could exceed the younger unhappiness. This was the first mode. Now we're going to look on to the next mode and it says antithesis only the bot selects. Now we have the opportunity to interpret what this bot has to tell us. And there we have a poem. Let's hear it. Of the next cottage that the little gentleness. Does that make sense to you guys? I mean. Of the next cottage that the little gentleness. Maybe, maybe. And we're going to move on to the next mode, which says synthesis, where you select and then the bot selects. So now we've entered this collaborative space. And let's see how that feels like. So I'm going to select the first word. It's like a night for me. Okay. I'm going to do blackout here now. This is what the poetry looks like. Let's hear it. Modern night to discover the sun, the man within every gentleness for I was. And it's interesting here. This experience is almost competitive also in nature because there's an, I, it's, I'm thoughtfully trying to select words here and the computer is literally just throwing a word at me. So that's something interesting to explore in this mode. The next mode is called symbiosis which says you select and that the bot suggests. We're going to try that now. So I'm going to select the, it has select, and now it's giving me some suggestions. So the suggestions for me are gentle, night, core, same. I selected night. Now the selections are hovel, before, course, for. And this was me and computer collaborating in some sense. This is the poem. The night before youth that the blind love and cause. Let's hear that again. The night before youth that the blind love and cause. I don't know. I mean, to me, these poems make some sense, but I'm really wondering what you guys are thinking, whether this is making sense to you or not. Now there's the last mode that we can explore. It's called visual and it says only the bot draws a wave. And when you click here, you can see some sort of pattern here. And what's happened here is that if you look at all these creation modes, the first one, this, these creation modes are coming from that idea of opposites and opposites, the interplay between them. So the first one is where only one opposite works, which is me. The next one is where only the computer works. Synthesis is where there was such sort of a middle ground between these two opposite ideas. Symbiosis was where these both ideas helped each other in some sense. And they were in many ways dependent on one another. And the last one visual is a wild card. Because in this case, I thought, why do we need to go for two opposites? There's human and computer. And they're both working under the rules of language. I still try to create poetry under language, the computer is also trying to perform under language. But this mode is where a new bot comes in and the bot operates under the rules of visual. So here, if you notice, it's a sine wave that the bot has plotted on onto this paragraph and then selected those words. Or could them course to prepared as a younger gentleness his? I mean, that makes more sense somehow. Or could them course to prepared as a younger gentleness his. And that is, that was pretty much the interface and it'll be really interesting once this is out, once this is over to you guys and see what you're getting from it, what you're experiencing from it. If you want to know more on this project, there's a link here which says in the context of human computer dichotomy, no more. And this explore expands onto that idea of oppositions. And the link to this generator will be shared with you soon and
that is what I had to share with you. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you had a nice time. Over to you, Dooby Dooby Dooby. <laughs> Jay sir, I'm very curious how this started. How, when, like, were you doing blackout poetry? There was an image of you doing something on a newspaper. Um, uh, that's correct, but that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it start for you? What? Oh, yeah, that's not you. How did Actually, it start for you? This hmm. project came out. So I'm in my final year of my design education for four right. years. Yeah. And in that we have something called the graduation project. Right. So this project came out of that uh, experience of the graduation project. I started by looking at this whole aspect of binaries and opposites. And okay. within that contextual inquiry, certain things folded, unfolded. I decided to explore this realm of language and text. And through that, I found, I discovered blackout poetry. And then this interface came out of that. Okay, so I've been given some instructions on how that I think I've been told to repeat that if you have, uh, Jayda, hang on, I have some more questions for you. Cool. Uh, uh, so if you have any questions, put a Q in the bracket, put the name of the person you want to ask that question to, and then put your question. If you don't have a specific person in mind, you can leave the bracket blank or not have the bracket at all. So, um, so, uh, so, uh, Jayda, you. Uh, I, I'm very fascinated. So, were you? Uh, so, when you were making this, these poetry, this poetry every day, uh, and some yeah. poems made sense, or some poems made more sense than the uh, than the rest, right? So, right. How, what was your? I mean, what did you think that was? Did you get a sense of the kind of poet your bot is? Like, is there a? That's there and a, it, yeah. So that's so if you if we go behind the algorithms that are on on play here so the bot is following a simple rule like i'm going i'm revealing the secret here in some sense yeah. the bot you, is following yeah. grammar rules for it's it, it just knows okay i need to follow a preposition a determiner a noun and these grammar rules are have been have been uh, noticed and analyzed through different poets hmm. so okay if if i try to save this poem only bot selects i'll save this I'm, I can look at the name. So for this file, the name says poem by Emily Dickinbot. So mm. the bot that was using the grammar rule by Emily Dickinson. And that's yeah. sort of a pun on the name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. Thanks, Jaser. And we'll, we've, we've got some questions coming in for you, but we'll take them in the end. Our next, our next presenter is uh, Hugo. Hugo Pilate. Hugo Pilate is a designer. And uh, he has a very interesting practice because with every project of his, he seems to be, um, he seems to be sort of trying to understand something in the world around him. And this project that he'll present here today is a, is a very charming little project, but it, it's very beautiful. And uh, I mean, the exact details he'll share with you. But I think what I find very fascinating about this project is that it has this sort of this childlike curiosity in it. And it's, uh, and the... And it has got this really sort of a very simple grace, but yet it's an extremely um, sort of thought provoking. And it's a, it, it, uh, it, it, it's very simple. It's, it's very simple looking uh, modality exposes uh, a lot to us. So uh, Hugo, are you there? Um, yes, I'm waiting for my video to come on. I think I don't yeah. have access just yet, but thank you very much for a, a very kind introduction, Agat. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, while that gets started, basically, I, I just wanted to say a quick word about this, and uh, I'll explain more after we, we try um, this kind of uh, performance experience. But basically, what I've tried to do is use very rudimentary code, um, because that's the, the extent of my knowledge and, and uh, the extent of my know-how in creative coding. And, and use you know, our power of perception and, and interpretation as humans to kind of read between the lines. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, leave it there and okay, cool. uh, start so, sharing my screen. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to switch my video up. All the best for that. Thank you. Okay, is my screen visible? Yeah. Perfect. Great. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I'd like to invite you to uh, big questions for small talk. 
And uh, in this session, I'd like to walk you through a very simple uh, kind of question generator I've created uh, to get us through, you know, all these uh, awkward moments of, uh, of silence or kind of proximity intimacy where you, you kind of are there and you know the person and you have to make conversation, but that might be a little bit tough. So, you know, once upon a time, this used to be when you were stuck in the elevator uh, on your way to work. Uh, and now this might be more, you know, when uh, you're, you're on the conference call, but everyone's muted because it hasn't started yet, right? But so I think we can all kind of put ourselves in, into that space and into that mind, uh, mindset. And what I'd like for you to do is uh, please join me in uh, this machine-aided exercise of uh, improvisation, right? And what we'll do is basically um, there's a kind of question generator in the back. I'll be running through it, seeing what questions I like. And once I choose one, I'll paste it into the chat and I'd love for you to uh, answer it, right? So any of these questions can be answered by yes or no, but I would love for you to give me a little bit of an explanation as to why uh, you would have put uh, one or the other, right? So uh, if we take a brand new one as an example, um, do you think intrepid global leaders would ever disappear when prompted to do so? So I might answer uh, no, because they would uh, never do that. They are too self-absorbed, right? So this is the kind of uh, dynamic I want to develop. We'll do maybe five, six questions. And really the idea is for you to have fun uh, with this. And at the end, I'll collate all the answers, uh, you know, from the different feeds and uh, we'll put it into a nice little kind of digital zine that we're sharing with everyone else. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the chat on my end. Okay, I have it. Great. And I'm going to check for questions. So just wait for me to paste it into the into the chat. Another one. Oops, this one disappeared. Sorry. Okay, let's try this one. Do you think detached trees would ever accumulate junk when on a shopping spree? Okay. So I'm going to paste it here. I hope everyone can see it. Do you think detached trees would ever accumulate junk when on a shopping spree? And now you can go into the chat and uh, answer yes or no. And so I have someone saying yes, as they are separated. Yes, because they have lost their roots. Yet they won't because they carry reusable bags. Very nice. Of course, and they can store them in their trunk. Oh, amazing. Someone has junk in the trunk. No, because they are pretty detached. Maybe. Wow. Is that amazing? Okay, great. So a couple more seconds. Okay, I'll wait for one more answer. Okay, great. Oh, okay. So many. Wait. Yes, they would be decide to put humans in their shopping carts. No, because they would use strong bark lotions. Yes, because they're shopping. There's always junk coming in with that. Beautiful. Okay, so that was... That was perfect. Let me try to find another question. Um, oh, do you think virtuous global leaders? One sec. Do you think virtuous global leaders would ever interrogate passers-by when turned on? Okay, so this is completely open to interpretation. Just to see what comes out of this one. <laughs> yes, because what's a virtuous global leader? One could only hope they won't grow up as well. Yes, they should, since they're virtuous. Yeah, they always try something or the other. Nah, they're too nice for this vice. Wow, nice. I like this one. Okay, great. So maybe I'll just do two more, and then uh, I'll tell you just a little bit about how this came to be, and uh, that'll be the end of my session one second okay okay do you think let's leave that one for later it's too real uh, trees we've already talked about shopping sprees also oh okay this one's also quite close to reality but there's a lot of uh, junk accumulation in shopping sprees today. Yeah. 
Any ideas? Is it too close to reality? If, if so, I can, okay. Yes, because it would unfree, unfreeze what was prior. Okay. Unless they plan it. Yes, it will be their new home. Of course, we are addicted to cold junk. Yes, because they're extraterrestrials. Ooh, nicely done, Ravisha. Okay, great. So last one. Uh, let me just try to see if we can get some uh, newer sentences. Central bureaucrats. Sea lions. I think I'll wait on this one. Sea lions again. Um, okay. Do you think unforgiving entrepreneurs would ever avoid each other when prompted to do so? I'm not sure why, what they're being unforgiving about or avoiding each other for, but please let me know. It's a tough one. Depends on how much money is involved. Yes. And when not prompted to do so. No, because they would miss out on PR. No, once prompted for profit. Really nice. No, they feed off each other's energy. They wouldn't even need prompting. <laughs> okay, so there's one more actually I saw that I, I kind of liked that uh, has gone by. Oh, there's more coming in. Yes, confrontation is tough for entrepreneurs. <laughs> Great. Yes, because elephants are with you. <laughs> okay, uh, amazing, thank you. So I'll, I'll do one more. Do you th it's, uh, it was from before, but I, I, I've copy and pasted it. Do you think penny pinching athletes would ever choose to change things up when planets collide? And that'll be the last one. You have the ability to. <laughs> Ravisha is on fire. Well, this is, yeah, I agree. Well, maybe we can close on this then. Um, so I'll, I'll just quickly tell you about they're both magnificent bodies. Ah, nice. So feel free to keep dropping them in. I'm just going to show you a little bit about um, what this is about and what this is all together. So um, actually this generator is, is a very kind of simple structure where uh, I've uh, created a question um, and uh, left blank, blanks in it like a Mad Lib exercise for uh, you know, different words to be scrambled within it, right? So if I'm sure you've noticed by now, but all the questions start with, do you think? And there's an adjective, a noun. Then it goes to a conditional, would ever. Then there's an action. Um, and when, a situation, right? And through this, I, I was trying to imitate this kind of uh, candid uh, process of asking questions about the world altogether, right? So even if it ends in a yes or no, you're kind of forced to wonder why that question is being asked. And so this is a, a kind of a riff off of an existing project uh, that I had, and I've written about it uh, on Medium a little bit. But so this was meant more for the corporate sector. I'm a design researcher and design strategist. And so uh, I run a lot of co-creation workshops where you get, you know, 20, 40 people in a room and you, you have them come up with ideas. Um, but you realize that, you know, a lot of these ideas are fairly uh, easy to come up with usually, you know, if you have to come up with something on the spot, it can be tough to, uh, to kind of come up with a perfect idea on the spot, not that that's the point. But there's a lot of value when you take all these ideas into a, a shared structure and then kind of scramble them together, right? And so this was actually first created for a, a workshop on rethinking uh, the future of uh, female contraception. And since, you know, so I, in this piece, I tell a little bit the story of uh, what it means to kind of run these kinds of workshops. But over time, I've been able to, uh, you know, kind of refine this process and adapt it to a few other spaces. So uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Unbox, but that's something 
we repeated this structure to put it as part of the branding and it was part of a few different uh, goods that we shared at the Unbox Festival in Bangalore in uh, last Feb or last last Feb. Uh, it was used at an exhibit uh, we used and when I say we sorry I should have mentioned this but uh, I used to work at Quicksand for the past three years so this is something I developed there. Uh, so we used it in an exhibit um, and so this is kind of the latest version of uh, these experiments. We've even tried an illustrated one that will load in a second. But so all of these felt very stiff and kind of uh, objective and, and have a specific intent. And so I was just trying to create one that was a little more poetic. And Ambika was nice enough to, to kind of reach out and see if we could include it uh, in this session. So that's about it for me. I hope I haven't gone too much over time. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Hugo. I think that was very interesting. And you gave us... Uh... Uh, a little bit of a warm up on the chat window and now we are all very are warmed up to type lots of things in this window, lots of questions. Um, uh, so I want to remind everybody, keep the questions coming. Uh, and our next, our next presenter is Preeti. Um, uh, Preeti is, uh, is an information designer and she works at the intersection of design technology and code. And what she's showing us today is actually Kalidas's uh, uh, Meghdoot, and I think a part of that. And um, I, I don't want to take the risk of explaining the project. So over to you, Preeti. And uh, yeah. Thanks, Go Sakar. ahead. I'll just set up my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. All right, so without further ado, I'll just quickly go over what, how this project sort of like, how, how this even happened. So back in design school, uh, for my final capstone, I had to sort of uh, bring in everything, all, all different aspects of who I am. And this project basically combines my understanding and interpretation of uh, Indian vernacular poetry. And as a dancer, as a Bharatanatyam artist, with my interest in expressive typography as a designer and my limited experience of using programming as a creative medium. I guess it was a combination of all of these. Uh, I've had a chance to like read and analyze few of like Indian classical works and reimagine them into dance performances. So it's sort of like, like drawing parallels and seeing how this graceful amalgamation of like space and motion and voice could serve, you know, to express the emotion is what I was trying through this project. And if I had to show like some of my inspirations, it's mostly being like, how does this post digital era look like? So when you go beyond screens, how do we sort of augment the physical world with digital information? And through this way, how do we sort of reconnect back to space in meaningful and like beautiful ways? And a couple of people have already done this and like on similar lines. And that would be like Kyle and Zach and, uh, some of these people have been, uh, I especially like Kyle has been like, kind enough to sort of like, look into the work and sort of give some response from his side, uh, which I'm sort of grateful about. But overall, I guess the idea was to explore type in this post digital age. And how do I sort of uh, embody like the entire embodying aspect of spatial interactive and immersive dimension. And how do I take type into that dimension was the idea. And uh, such works have already been done in the West and East. When I when I when I talk about like poetry and type, we've had like futurist poets, concrete poets, and even like Indian poets like try and like explore type in different ways, like through expressive typography and poetry. Uh, but yes, how do I bring it to this era, to this time, and how do I see how can it be evolved and adapt to the emerging media and affer affordances? And there's plethora of examples there, but owing to time, I'll sort of skip and just show you a couple of interesting works that have been tried and done. And uh, going to, um, I'm sorry, I guess I fixed it. Yes, talking about Meghadutam, which is sort of like the premise and one of the main uh, essence of my project. Uh, looking back at Indian classical poetry, which holds like a lot of like profound cultural significance and it's always been like a constant source of inspiration for artists and for like creative practitioners. And it's not just Kalidasa, we've got like Mirabai, Tulsidas, a lot of them, and just to name a few. And 
uh, all of the works are charged with like rich imagination which provides like the substance that we need for such experiments to specific type and uh, given that they've stood the test of time and it also gives you allows you the freedom of artistic interpretation i have taken kalidasa's meghadutam and i've tried attempted to to say uh, to envision this in as an interactive three dimensional form that moves through space now i'll quickly skip this and go to the actual work i hope this is audible right so the purpose of this reimagination is to kind of like enhance the emotional journey of the cloud in this particular piece of poetry so i'll be focusing on the emotional qualities as expressed by the poet and how do i give it like a physical form through type and i've sort of used motion and interaction here and i'll just go to that. i'll only be showing a couple of stanzas today uh pp i think is there there's no audio coming oh okay uh you saying there's no audio there's no audio there was only a video i think that okay um that's weird so i'm not sure why that's happening i think you'll have to so you'll have to reshare this screen and then there's an option there to share with audio i think oh okay my bad apologies no that's okay it's just right so i've just explored like a couple yeah, of yeah i can hear uh, something now thanks piti yeah go ahead yeah okay yeah sure loud as a hundred drums pit the thunder sound sofa strains the swelling gale breathes through the canes where ganga leads her purifying waves and the musk deer spring frequent from the caves your path retraced resume your promised flight when in the east the sun restores the light so the idea was to sort of capture the winds swelling breath the waves of ganga and the clouds path as it sort of crosses all these landscapes and uh, it's interactive so basically i uh, i have the form retained but i do get to interact with the way uh, the waves move in within this three dimensional space So the, this particular stanza just tries to capture this particular sketch tries to cap capture the movement of the wind, the cloud, and the water. Lightened by tasks like these, the day proceeds. But much I dread, a bitterer night succeeds. Her slight form, consumed by ceaseless pain. skills like the moon hastening to its wane disturbed by tears by those pallid cheeks burn with visions of her dearer half's return so in the sketch i have like just looking at the typographic form i've got like two uh, sort of like tendons which try and like endlessly meet but they get like pulled apart again and again so this sort of captures the yaksha and the yakshi from the poem that are sort of trying to meet but not able to since because of the because of whatever they had i think it's quite relevant to the current scenario and now i'm like interacting with it trust to futurity for still we view the always wretched always blessed are few life like a wheels revolving up 
turns around, now whirled in the air, now tracked along the ground. This is sort of special to me because uh, one of the main elements of Kalidasa's poetry is the metaphor of a Persian wheel, which sort of keeps revolving and changing form. But what it tries to depict is that what goes around sort of comes around. So the circularity of the shape and the motion that is being used here is trying to convey that metaphor of the wheel of fortune. That's pretty much what I had to show. Uh, just a few stanzas from Bob. Okay, that's okay, thanks. pretty much from my side. Thanks, Preeti. I think super interesting. So I just had, I have, I'm very curious. I want to know that when this, when you were imagining this project and you also kind of mentioned this in the little write-up that you sent that there's a mention of space. And uh, so uh, was this, was, what was this imagination of space? Was it, uh, was it, was it designed or was it imagined for a certain kind of space? Uh, and how was it, how was it then people would interact with this piece? Um, Right. Uh, it's great that you asked. So, uh, yes, this was planned for a space. Actually, uh, the intent was to have this like an installation that people could sort of come and interact with and experience this particular poetry sort of in space and not like, you know, on paper or screen. So that was the initial intent. Uh, but also that owing to I was like in final year college, I couldn't really like afford setting up an installation like that. But yes, I would sort of love to that. That's something I really want to do. Like take this to like an installation or like a space where I can install this and people could just come and interact with it. And the poetry sort of like the form sort of changes to the way people uh, interact with the actual piece. So that's sort of the idea. Cool. Thank you. And I'm sure that there'll be more questions coming your way at the end. I also I saw some questions in the in the Zoom feed, but also there are about 100 people on our YouTube feed looking at this event. So um, I'm sure there'll be questions coming. Our next presenter is uh, is actually, I'm very excited about the next one because uh, it's, uh, it's probably going to make us laugh. And uh, the, the next presenter is Praveen Sinha. And he's, a, uh, he's an interaction designer. And he's also an educator and new media practitioner. And his work is sort of lies between code and storytelling. And today he's going to, the work that he's sharing today is about uh, the Indian Nord and Haiku. And uh, it's, uh, it's really interesting how, yeah, how you've kind of been able to uh, put both of them together in a project. Over to you, Praveen. Make us laugh <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll start it with a laugh, actually. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, guys, I'll start showing you with what I made, actually, for this presentation. So I'll just stop the video. Uh, is my feed uh, visible? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Spark AR interfaces. Yeah. So this is the Spark AR interface, uh, and I made a AR filter for Instagram actually, which writes haiku when you tilt your head like this. Okay. Uh, so that was uh, the concept uh, which I came up with when uh, I got the introduction to CoPro Jam. So I'll tell you like how I got to this point, uh, right, over experimenting with different stuff. So uh, I call it leaning haiku actually. Uh, so what happens is like you lean your head and you get your haiku. That's the basic concept. And from haiku, I'll start. Uh, okay, I got introduced to haikus very early on because I'm very uh, avid fan of animes and uh, manga. 
so i used to read these haiku poetry uh, and from that i got into a game uh, uh, early on i think in college days i used to play this game which was called haiku jams so uh, the lovely thing about this uh, app was it uh, it's like you write a three line haiku but every line is written by some stranger uh, from around the world or from a, another user so uh, for me this was another level uh, the first time i intro got introduced to generative text which was a very natural form of uh, generative uh, crea creativity right and uh, after that what happened like 3 years back uh, i was in pune uh, teaching and what i used to do is i used to just troll the cities and i used to click these photos and just write haikus over it Uh, so i used to call them city haikus so something like uh, this was there uh, where i was just sitting on a station and i'll write a haiku by clicking photos and uh, that was it like every uh, all, all all of these haikus were i was just posting on instagram so for me uh, haikus were uh, not just restricted the in in the structure because i think uh, i observed uh, something and i wrote ha haiku as per myself Uh, right and then recently like this year i have been experimenting with ar <laughs> right so this is some weird things i am i have been making so i thought ki, okay why not uh, try to interpret haikus with ars right because uh, i uh, haiku is uh, poetry and ar is sort of connecting uh, physicality with uh, a virtual world So I thought it will be very nice to have the combination of AR, physical bodies, and code. So uh, I used the body motion, uh, which was the head, and I used Spark AR as a medium uh, to get a haiku. Uh, okay, and uh, the thing with body motion was I was I am just fascinated by the Indian knot, right? Because it can be interpreted in so many different ways, you know, like yes, no, uh, don't know. So i thought that i'll take this interaction uh, and i'll code it in my ar uh, ar program so like when you do the indian knot you get a poetry because it's like a meta <laughs> that you the the action is a poetry in itself and you get another form of poetry from it uh, and while doing this the first step was to generate haiku uh, which is legible so as you can see in the gif here you know like Woof, bark, woofy, bark, rub, bark, barky, woof. So uh, it it sometimes makes sense. It sometimes doesn't make sense, uh, as you can you 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 have seen in Jaisal's uh, work also. Uh, so I I chose the simple format of a haiku. So it's like the first line is referring to an observation from nature, and the second line is uh, connected with human emotions, which you can feel, and the third one is like a philosophical truth. and uh, i think when i released the uh, ar filter most of the people were doing the normal uh, head nod left right left right left right but i thought of uh, introduced a easter egg which i didn't tell anybody that if you do uh, more left uh, nods you will get a sad vibe haiku <laughs> and if you do a more right nods you will get a joyful haiku so uh, uh, i'll just show you guys like how i approached uh, this thing so when, when you when i do this right can you see on this part uh, the left and right ticks uh, get highlighted so i just take uh, take them and i uh, get a simple random value uh, through these uh, already populated arrays so i i wrote all these lines uh, to figure out uh, what type of different uh, uh, things uh, you know we, we could be doing uh, with haikus right and for me the best thing was when i published this uh, haiku right uh, so people started i'll just finish this okay or maybe right so uh, it's it's like this like i uh, every time something comes up it it people just find it relevant to their own situation somehow maybe so i got like lot of responses on uh, uh, what do you say instagram and so i'll show you few of those uh, what i got so i think ambika here also started uh, with exploring this and somehow Uh, it got glitchy 
right it got layered and that was another fun part for me because uh, you know like it's like people are hacking these filters in itself so i'll show you another one so somebody instead of using their own face they use their uh, passport photos and they created a haiku <laughs> right uh, and some people also layered the haiku on my own filter uh, so it's like fading the sun and night of the full moon so it was very interesting that yeah, even on a layering uh, phase i was getting contradictory haikus and uh, some people started taking philosophers and started creating their own haikus over their faces right so it would i thought that it's very interesting people have uh, you know ex experimented with even something like uh, shami kapoor's video <laughs> so for me these type of interactions are the part of fun uh, when i am trying to make such haikus uh, essentially so i if you guys want to try it out you can uh, check it out here i guess i'll just uh, you can take a picture for now and i will share this later on uh, with everybody in the uh, in the emails uh, other i think uh, that will be all from my side and just stop the me. sharing thank you uh, praveen and uh, um yeah so so how many people do you think have downloaded this filter and how many haikus have been made <laughs> do you have any idea so from the uh, like starts i got uh, i saw it only like for two days which i when i launched it so it around reached around 3500 people were uh, interacting with it so wow. i was also surprised because i uh, i i generally didn't expect this much uh, interaction on the filter ah huh. nice cool so uh, our uh, so thanks praveen and uh, i'm sure there'll be questions for you and we'll get to those uh, in the end um i want to also tell everybody that all the work we we'll, whatever whoever is presenting we will share all of these links with everybody over an email uh, after the event uh, so uh, so if you've missed out on somebody's uh, uh, links etc don't worry we'll send them across to you our next presenter is uh, akash who's also known as sound codes he is an experimental artist exploring electroacoustic improvisation data manipulation algorithmic composition and sensor based music and today the project he is uh, going to share with us in fact is something that he made during the lockdown it's called phantom words and it's actually a it's i feel it's a project with uh, magic in it i feel that it's a it's a really uh, interesting project and it's got it's got some elements of sort of auditory illusions and uh, uh, i think it's this project is going to really really blow us blow our mind so akash if you're there yes hello thank you yes uh, i cannot switch on my video you cannot uh... it says you cannot start your video because of the host yes okay cool yeah. hello it. I have touched. Go for it. Cool. So uh, I essentially do like three kinds of work. Like I generally the vibe is like in arts, education, or in like commercial projects. Uh, most of people like call us or relate to us in a sense of like creative coders or creative technologists. But for this evening, we can consider ourselves as like augmented poets who are taking like. this medium or augmenting it beyond like a piece of paper uh like uh con unconventional usage of language uh or like the creative usage of languages where like normally the poetry starts uh similarly the un creative use of the codes uh is also where i think like this sort of code poem jam starts uh like a short uh, uh description of the an auditory illusion so in simple words phantom words are sounds uh, which are specifically designed so that 
they don't have any word or meaning attached to them or it's essentially a noise but when we hear them our brain gives meaning to these sounds and we hear words or uh, this illusion or uh, is gives insight to somewhat kind of a general feeling or the emotion we as a listener are having at that point of time so essentially when we play these sounds and we had an awesome meal so we start we think about the like the words we hear are somewhat correlating to the idea of food and so on mm, i'll share my screen Mm. Yes. So, mm, I did this experiment on. Uh, so this started as like a tiny course I designed for story of. Like it was in general more related to uh, psychoacoustics and perception of sound. So after that course, I got like feedback and. quite a few friends asked me to continue this specific thing like quantum work so i thought like in a lockdown and this is like a quite a unique time in uh, for all of us like entire world like locked inside entire world is shut so uh, we all went through like crazy amount of emotional changes or like perceptual changes so i did this for 10 days dur during the lockdown and initially the idea was to somehow like get like a sentiment or like the emotional data of what people are contributing uh but while plotting them i realized that i cannot eliminate the insane amount of bias i have present with the data like the way i am interpreting the data so i thought let's leave it and like just focus on the words and how can we block the words so i'll play a sound this is so here essentially we heard the first three uh blocks like the day 1 day 2 and day 3 and the type size this is based on the number of people submitted that word so five in the first cube would be like committed by a lot of people compared to people who sent space or fire same thing when the second block like mic wait fight make fine is given by contributed by a quite a lot of people compared to like society file wing and so on on uh, the building uh, the background of phantom was it's quite easy to make like you can use like a software or like anything even a mm, audio editing software would be great so the basic idea is uh uh basic idea is like you take a syllable put it in the left take another syllable put it on the right uh, drift both the syllables uh by a very tiny amount and uh loop it you have phantom words oh uh, that's it i think so akash yeah so the word five is actually not there in that sound is it No, the, no, it has no sound. It has no words. It's just a syllable loop constantly. This is this is so interesting. This is so I um, I couldn't believe it. I thought that when I heard your phantom words uh, when you had first shared it with us, and I I really I it 
even if I tried to convince myself that five wasn't there, it, it was very difficult for me to, uh, you know, imagine that five wasn't there. But I have to trust you that five wasn't there. So no, uh, I think <laughs> thanks a it's lot. It's nonsense. Like the sound <laughs> file in itself is nonsense. It has absolutely no word, no meaning. It's just like a uh, like here. It's more deeper. Like uh, the auditory cortex. What we have here, like it. it has a primary function of rejecting sound and whenever and our brain likes to make meaning make patterns of things and hmm. this sort of nonsense because it has like characteristics of syllables involved into it so our mind is just giving hmm. us words so yeah <laughs> very nice so it's also possible that if i hear the same sound which is what you said if i hear the same sound again i'll find something else in it I think. Uh, Can you repeat it again? Yeah, please? I said that. It, is it possible that I, if I hear the same phantom words again, I will hear hmm. something else uh, Pro- altogether? Most probably. Like if you hear the same sample in the morning, uh, the okay. perception is different than what you hear in the evening. Hmm. Damn interesting. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Akash. and Thank you. Uh, we'll move to our mm-hmm. next uh, presenter and the final one for the evening um and uh, so our final presenter uh, today evening is Kofi Oduro and uh, he is a creative coder and a performative programmer who uses code poetry music visuals in conjunction with other mediums to enhance experiences and today uh, he's done something special for draft and uh, uh, he he is using sort of live coding tools alongside poetry to show that code is poetry and poetry is code and code is poetry poetry is code is actually what uh, copo jam believes and uh, that is that is where our inquiry started so um, uh, yeah are you yeah great kofi over to you Coffee yes I'm here hi hi everybody so today you're going to get a performance mixed with some audio visuals just to showcase that code is another form of writing and the reason why I do all of this experience is to show that depending on the visuals on the sound you hear it might affect how you feel so I hope you enjoy the show Hold up. Hold up one second. I think I actually might have forgotten to share computer sound. I right, there. Yeah. yeah. As the words whisper, their tenderness stays crisper. These words that are just flowing on the top of my head are words that come up from the mind as if they were just from bed. The time difference may be a lot, but the way the poetry flows and weaves within the code, it does say a lot. It does say a lot as sometimes our thoughts are just words that are fought as they battle, and sometimes we don't know how they linger. but sometimes it's just the flick the flick of switching with just a finger cuz code is poetry poetry is code sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold sometimes it makes no sense and sometimes it has the ability to put you in success and sometimes as the visuals just keep flowing and you don't even know as in canada as you know sometimes the days just keeps on snowing but for this is not a bad thing as all good things sometimes have an opposite fling that leads you to just leave your mind on a road that leads you to sing and sometimes we just wonder and sometimes we just flunder sometimes the colors that we change are just an imagination range 
Sometimes we don't know what changes. Sometimes we don't know what changes. And sometimes we don't know. But we go on the pace. We look at the sky. We look at outer space. We look at the stars, wondering, can we ever travel this far? And these are just some of the words. These are just some of the motions. These are just some of the emotions that get evoked, that get emote, that go like a ship that is trying to float. For sometimes our mind can grow like Jack in the Beanstalk, putting on the motions, putting on the tenders, putting on these thoughts as we end up to the walk. And if you want to enhance this experience that you're currently listening to, you can add some words in the chat and I will try to bring them true, bring them true in the mood. And sometimes we don't know the hue, like you see this orange, maybe I might be able to change it to blue. For what you think, it's what you are. And what you are, it's another star, another being that sometimes you get the delight. Maybe you just gotta close your eyes and listen to the beats in the background. Or sometimes you look at the lights and see how they mingle with the, with the sound. Or maybe you're just wondering how the clovers are looking as they're going around. For this is cold, for this is poetry, this is both. So what is the flow? Does it go upstream, does it keep it clean? Are you able to visualize what you see on the screen? Does it make sense? Does it make you tense? Does it get you going? Does it get you flowing? Does it get you thinking? Does it make you slow? Does it make you happy? Does it make you mad? Or do tears come out of your eyes wondering why you're sad? Should I add a different beat? Should I add a different tempo? Should I make this another show or just remind you of your TV episodes? For this is what happens when you freestyle on the top of your head. You don't know what directions may come. You don't know what directions may run. It can get all over the place. It can go all over the space. It can make you wonder. It can make you candor. It can make you wondering if what you're seeing even is going to flow well. As I just change these numbers, making sure they just don't hinder, making sure they just don't linger, making sure they just don't sprinkle as they go in the batter, getting a bit of splatter. I might just have to stop to make this all make sense in the matter as I just reverse the sense of time, as I just go with the rhyme and saying lyrics that are just flowing from the top of my mind. So I'm going to end it for now. And I'm hoping that you enjoyed this show because poetry is code, code is poetry. And all the time they flow. Yeah, oh. I don't know if you can. Yeah, so that's just yeah. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Thanks, Kofi. I think it was uh, no problem. Amazing. Just I'll just start my video. Uh, I'm very curious. So what are you using? Are you using I, I could see some Hydra in there. But uh, yes. what else is there? Oh, what else is there is um, uh, Sonic Pi. Okay. Sonic Pi is based off Ruby. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of uh, live coding languages, but what I like about Sonic Pi, I can like change samples, I can read my code. Mm -hmm. And how this came about is that I always wanted to rap on my own beat, like freestyle on a code. Mm. And I'm like, oh, poetry and music goes well. But I realized that sometimes I needed time to like let people soak it in. So then I realized that with Hydra, if I mix all three of them together, it gives people another dimension because now your brain is not only thinking mentally but you're also thinking emotionally because you know the way the yeah. colors the speed like i'm giving more to the poetry so every time i change yeah. a word or change the code you have a word associated so it's almost like an, an uh sensational poem you know like a poem that touches all the senses yeah right i think that hydra hydra does add a lot and uh, it kind of very immediately we kind of lose ourselves in the poetry and kind of we, we are immersed in the experience. I think it was, it was really interesting and I had never seen anything like this before. So, uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. So 
Kofi. So uh, uh, we would now take, uh, we have about five or seven minutes. Uh, we now take some questions. So I'm going to, I have some question actually for, uh, uh, we've kind of compiled all the questions and I have them here with me. I want to start with a question for Akash. Uh, Akash, are you there? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, there, we have a question that uh, for you that can, uh, I'll read the question the way it was um, uh, sort of sent to us that is there an application of phantom words to identify biases or contexts for people? Um, in the sense, I, I mean, if I'm, I'm trying to understand the question that how I interpret a certain phantom sound, does it tell, tell you something more about me? Uh, oh, so yeah. we can consider this as a Rorschach test of like Rorschach test is visual, phantom words are oral. So in itself, yeah. they don't hold much data, but unless and until you further investigate, like if you know the grounding from where this word is coming or why this word is coming or some sort of a background of the individual. Yes, then they do give you some greater insight. So if you know a person well and you play a sound file for that individual, uh, it would give you some insight. But if it's done randomly on the internet, not necessarily. Unless and until you take a additional step of reaching out to the individual asking what was the feeling what was the day like and hmm. these sort of, so yes. Hmm. Hmm. And do you think that, I mean, I'm also curious that the syllables that you put in were English, uh, Roman. Uh, then, no, not really. So then, first five days, I essentially had fun by these meme videos. I took some ridiculous meme videos and huh. I chopped them. They were Hindi, English, and like one was like a French parody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you see the original video it's really ridiculous it's uh, funny <laughs> yeah. ridiculous so yeah. I so thanks Akash it was wonderful uh, Jaiser I we have a question for you as well and it's about I think the uh, I think it's about how the in one of the modes uh, how does uh, you know when you select a word does it influence the next word in any way? Um. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening there is the word that you're selecting, the mm. computer takes it. It sees what grammar it belongs to. For example, you selected a noun. Mm. Then it takes that word. It goes back to this, uh, this, in, this huge corpus of Robert Frost poetry. Mm. And it sees that in that poetry piece, uh, what follows a noun mostly. So okay. it got, okay, the, the noun is mostly followed by a determiner. Hmm. So then it comes back and picks a determiner from this. So it's referring back to this poetry text, trying hmm. to see the word you selected, what, what can come next? What is the hmm. best possibility? Hmm. It comes back and, and that's it. Yeah. You know, in one of the modes where you work with the bot and the bot kind of hmm. suggests to you that choose maybe one of these three words it highlights. If you select another word in that, then what happens? Not, not one that was suggested by the bot. You can totally do that. And that is, I think what feels nice because like this aspect yeah. of suggestiveness, it's more gentle. Yeah. So yeah. You can definitely go ahead and do that. Cool. So we are, I mean, I'm definitely waiting to explore this when it goes live on the internet. Uh, the next question is for Preeti. Preeti. Okay. Yeah. The one of the question is, and let me, um, have you considered uh, using the script in which it was originally uh, the the poem originally written, have you considered uh, using that for the project, or uh, why did you choose the script that you have um, instead? Right, I'm so glad this question was asked. So yes, in fact, my uh, first attempt was to like try Devnagri because this is some Sanskrit piece, but uh, unfortunately, so I have only experience with P5, and P5 wasn't very supportive with the keyboard engine and you know like using an index script. So the support was only for Latin. In fact, that was one of the reasons why I am sort of transitioning to Open Frameworks right now, just to be able to create this project again with an index script. So that's totally the idea. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I want to, uh, there's a question that uh, Suvani has for all of us actually, and uh, that 
I think this is uh, something that uh, she's kind of putting it uh, in context of Kofi's performance. But so whoever wants to answer this uh, can go ahead. So the question is also on our Zoom chat panel. I'm reading it out for you guys now. Um, hold on, let me just go there. Yeah, Kofi's performance makes me really curious about how one can computationally think think of and render the poetic meter rhythm and sonic patterns in code generated poetry. Uh, so I think what she's asking is that how concepts such as poetic meter rhythm and sonic can be interpreted in the context of computational work. And if anybody has any ideas or uh, thoughts on this, please go ahead. Yes. Uh... So the question is, how can one think? The thing I think that we always forget sometimes is that poetry, music is very rhythmic in nature. What, like, I remember I learned something about Euclidean rhythms is where all the music that we all listen to, no matter where you're from, always has a certain pattern that makes it identifiable. So if you're listening to rock music, it has a heavy cadence three-fifths so like on if you listen to jazz if you listen to music and movies they all follow a different pattern and sometimes we forget that humans we naturally do routines which can be related to um what you call it can be related to routines related to equations right when you wake up in the morning mm -hmm. you do your own program you brush mm -hmm. your teeth you mm -hmm. eat some food we eat breakfast that can be translated into code. So that's why in my pieces, I like to bring so many different elements to make people realize that, okay, code is not that scary. Code is just another extension of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Cool, interesting. So I have a, I mean, I have, I'm, I'm curious about um, two things that I want to ask everybody and not um, let this opportunity go. Uh, one of them is about learning to code and, uh, a lot of us feel that there is a, um, there's sort of a, you know, it's, it's extremely difficult and it's, it's, it's something very, very difficult to do, but do you have any, uh, suggestions for those who are right now poets and want, want, want to probably cross over into computation or, uh, or people who are interested in coding and, uh, any, any thoughts on, uh, how you guys started or what should be the smallest first step in that direction? Anyone, maybe Praveen, you can take it up because you have, I mean, you also uh, have some connection with education. Yeah, so like, uh, I mean, I was going to uh, say that uh, since I was a coder initially, like I was in computer science engineers, for me, coding was very natural. Hmm. Uh, uh, and the thing was uh, that to, to get into poetry was a challenge for me. Like I was coming from the opposite end, right? And uh, from what I understood is like people should not get uh, when you're trying to get from poetry to coding, hmm. right, it's, it's just like what Kofi said, it's just an extension. And even if it's simple stuff, and if you start coding in the format of algorithms, hmm. even like basic steps, just like I told you, like in the haiku jam game, people were just writing three lines and all the three people are of different places. So it's like, uh, it's an algorithm uh, it, and that's how uh, I understood uh, to bring people like or non coders into coding, like first start writing basic steps. And if you, if you can understand or connect poetry with the, uh, those steps, then it, you will be easily available uh, shift to any form, any type of uh, coding, which you learn, like even basic, uh, something like uh, even spark AR is very basic. So even you can start with a, a similar thing. Okay. Uh, cool. Thanks, uh, Praveen. So I, the other question I want to, I have um, sort of going on in my mind uh, while we were planning Popo Jam and while we were thinking about draft is that how can we create more sort of inclusive communities around technology and culture? And um, uh, we've got some ideas and I think what draft is going to do in the future is uh, make an attempt at it. But uh, do you guys have any suggestions on how can we involve more and more people and uh, and diversify our audience and also the creators 
around in the in the scene yeah i think it's doing stuff like this because i think things like this it it shows the range of what is possible through code and poetry like a lot of like i like even though i do code and poetry there's a lot of stuff that i seen that i have i'm like oh that's cool i can incorporate it and i think showing people that stuff that you normally do can be put into both art and tech because these are two industries that people tend to say I don't know if I'm smart enough to be a coder. I don't know if I'm creative to be an artist. Mm. But sometimes it's just as simple as pressing numbers, playing around. And I think just to show people that there is fun and play can mm. he, can evoke people to, I'm willing to give it a chance. I'm willing to try. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I think so. I think that um, uh, today's uh, presentations were actually very encouraging. And uh, the diversity and the range that we saw today was was very inspiring and I'm sure there was something for everyone in it and uh, and a lot of us will probably become code poets after this and I hope that happens. I'm going to now uh, hand it over to Ambika. Uh, Ambika, are you there? Of course I'm there, I'm right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanted to first request everybody to switch their cameras on, on the presenters. So everyone can see presented. Kofi, your camera wasn't on. Is it that you're not connected? Oh no, it's it's like I'm in like an awkward like scenario because it's like uh -huh. it's like 10 a.m. here. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's also there. She's not a presenter, but she switched her camera on still. Uh, uh, okay, so we'll just uh, quickly give a. Thanks to all of you who came came through for us, and you know it's an unprecedented number. We were just thinking it'll be twenty of us, but uh, as I can see, we were like almost seven sixty nine on YouTube, and uh, I think about twenty people in attendance on Zoom. So far exceeded what we were thinking. Uh, so thank you for joining us for this most unusual uh, experiment, our first draft. Uh, a special thanks to our presenters. Uh, Hugo, uh, Jazar, uh, Preeti, uh, Praveen, Kofi, Akash, all of them. I know Akash is a little bit unwell, but he still made it. Uh, and Hasgeek, of course, for supporting and hosting. A lot of moral support. Zainab, Amur, Karthik, Nikhil for connecting us to Hasgeek. Uh, Prakriti for her design inputs. Pooja and Ravisha who have juggled all the chats and have made all the Q&A sessions so seamless and also my virtual handholders when I'm freaking out. And uh, as a follow-up to this event, we will be sharing an email with all the links of the artist's works, uh, ways to connect with the community and to learn more about uh, computational poetics and art and text. Uh, please share your feedback with us on email. We will be hosting a small meetup on the 23rd. Uh, it's not going to be so elaborate. It will probably be something a little more informal. Uh, if you want to know more on that, you can uh, be part of our growing Facebook community called Drafting Draft. Uh, so connect with us. Uh, we are available on Instagram. Uh, you've seen our uh, handles mostly. And uh, join us in this fun and exciting new thing that we are trying out. And uh, you know, uh, see you guys. And we are in the same house, by the way. <laughs> So thank you, thank you everyone. Thanks again, Hasgeek, mostly. Super, thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. Take care. Bye.